Okay, folks, welcome back. Um, today is Friday, and this is part two of the Chapter 17 notes. Um, I hope that you are uh, doing well and uh, did very well on the quiz, hopefully. I also want to inform you that next week um, you will have your practical on Wednesday. You're written on Thursday uh, over Chapter 17. Now, um, that's on the board. Um, I have posted information on the practical in Canvas. Uh, there are six injuries this time. So a few more, um, so that's why I'm giving you good notice. You'll have time to study on Monday. We'll prepare on Tuesday together as a class, and then we'll do the practical on Wednesday. So, uh, but right now, sorry, you're on me again. Right now, uh, we'll get rolling uh, with the groin strain. Uh, the groin strain um, is one of the more difficult problems to diagnose, actually, and it's often seen in the early part of a season um, due to poor strength and flexibility. Um, a lot of times, you know, people are out of shape or they haven't been doing the conditioning and they then they get going and then they end up straining their groin. Um, a sign of injury, people might feel like a sudden twinge um, or tearing um, during active movement. Um, it will be painful. Um, there might be a little bit of internal hemorrhaging, so like the muscle might have torn a little bit in there, but um, weakness. Okay, and this can be, um, these injuries can be pesky. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so um, the care. Well, you're going to rice, NSAIDs, and use analgesic, so like icy hot, things like that, um, on there. And then um, you got to determine the exact muscle or muscles involved. So the groin is not a muscle. The groin is an area of muscles. And so you have to determine which muscle is involved in order to strengthen it. Rest is going to be critical. You've got to get your range of motion back. And then they might, like, use a wrap if they need to. Um, if it's really severe groin pain, um, you might want to go ahead and refer them. Um, this is going back to yesterday. Uh, this is going back to yesterday. Um, what injury that we talked about yesterday um, involves the groin? What injury that we talked about yesterday involves the groin? So that's number one on your little sheet that you'll need to turn in today is what injury that we talked about yesterday can produce groin pain. Um, so here are some groin injury pain patterns. Okay, so you can see it can go all the way up into your belly, um, down into your leg. Um, you can see the gracilis pattern right over here, um, the adductor longus here, this would be an oblique. So lots of different things you can get um, considered the groin, but the groin is not a muscle, it's like the quad, it's not a muscle, it is a group of muscles. Um, this is sprains of the hip joint. Okay, so usually this happens because you violently twist um, due to a forceful contact. So maybe it's a force from an opponent or an object, or your trunk is forced over a planted foot in the opposite direction. Um, and the signs of injury here are uh, the signs of an acute injury um, would be like, you know, the normal things pain, um, in decreased range of motion but particularly with a sprain of the hip joint, the person's not gonna be able to circumduct it. So bring it up, out, and around, right? Kind of like when we do hip mobility to wall slides in APC, um, circumduct the hip, they wouldn't be able to do that. They'd have pain in the hip region, and then when they rotated, it would be increasingly painful. Um, what you would do for this is you'd do x-rays, also an MRI to rule out any fractures, um, and then depending on the severity, they might need um, crutches for this. Range of motion, and progressive resistant exercises are delayed until the hip is pain free. You don't want to push it too fast um, on this. Make sure you're filling out your injury chart and your unit plan as you go as, as well in addition to answering the questions that I might ask throughout. Okay, a dislocated hip. Um, it's a medical emergency due to the potential for avascular necrosis. Um, question number two that I need you to write down on the paper to turn into me is define avascular necrosis. Define avascular necrosis. We've talked about it. I need you, if you don't know what it is, I need you to look it up. Um, I, want, I need you to know what that is. Um, so it's the cause of it is the compression of the um, sciatic nerve, and maybe it gets irritated um, due to the spasm of the muscle. Um, it could actually mimic sciatica, a dislocated hip could. Um, but there's pain, there's numbness, there's tingling in the butt may go down into the foot. Um, it might increase follow periods of sitting, climbing, stairs, walking, or running. 
and they can't externally rotate their hip very well. So their hip's kind of internally rotated, so one knee's towards the other one, and they struggle to externally rotate their hip when they have a dislocated hip. But it is a medical emergency um, for sure. So what are you going to do? Well, you got to stretch and massage, um, and then NSAIDs may be prescribed. Um, you got to stop whatever caused it because you don't want to do it again. And then they might give you a steroid injection. Um, surgery can be an option as well if it, if it continues to happen. You can see in this image right here, the person's hip is up. That's a dislocated hip. That's not a good thing. There's a lot of things going on around here, a lot of vessels. Um, hint, hint on avascular necrosis, um, what might happen um, if the blood flow doesn't get there. All right, uh, this is a labral tear. And right over here, you see the image of the labrum. Cause is repetitive overuse. Um, it might occur due to acute trauma, like a dislocation. You can actually tear your labrum. But for the most part, it's repetitive overuse. Um, signs of injury, they often present as asymptomatic. So like they don't have symptoms. Um, there's maybe clicking, locking, or catching. Pain in the groin, stiffness, limited motion. Um, you just got to do some exercises uh, to maintain your range of motion. Avoid what hurts it. Um, NSAIDs, steroids, and then they might need to go in and fix it surgically. But um, interesting that sometimes it can actually be asymptomatic, so they won't even know they have it. These are just some images of labral tears. You can see how it's a little frayed right here. Um, same thing over here. Piriformis syndrome. Um, this one's pretty rare, actually, in sports. It's a traumatic force directed along the long axis of the femur, which just doesn't happen very often. Um, the signs of injury are going to be a flexed, so my knee is pulled up towards my uh, belly button, adducted, so kind of in, and then internally rotated hip. So similar to what a dislocated hip might look like. Um, palpation reveals a displaced femoral head um, and posteriorly, so the, the femur isn't where it's supposed to be. Um, this is serious pathology soft tissue, neurological damage, possible fracture can happen from this. So you've got to give immediate medical care for this one too. Um, this is also a medical emergency. Um, so number 23, um, because blood and nerve supply may be compromised. Um, and then two weeks immobilization and a crutch uh, for at least a month. They're going to be really careful with you if you get piriformis syndrome. Um, so here, that's where your piriformis is. Okay, um, and then piriformis massage treatment um, has been shown to be effective. Okay, so now um, I ask you hip problems in adolescence. Um, and there are two main ones. The first one is called leg calf perthes disease. And what happens here is avascular necrosis, which you looked at hopefully previously, um, of the femoral head in children ages 4 to 10. And so because of that avascular necrosis, their cartilage becomes necrotic or it dies and it flattens out. So the pain in the groin that can be referred down to the ab up to the abdomen or down to the knee, they also typically will have a limp um, and they could have a limited range of motion. So this is leg calf perthes disease. And here are some images. You can see that there just wasn't enough blood flow here. So it kind of broke off a little bit. And here you can just see the bone just doesn't look right. Okay, and that's because it wasn't getting everything that it needed. Um, what do you do? Well, you can put them on bed rest um, to reduce the chance that it would become chronic. You've got to give them a brace to avoid direct weight bearing. If you can get it early, um, you may be able to reossify it and revascularize it. If not treated, um, it can have lead to osteoarthritis later in life. All right, and then the other one is called slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Um, and this one might be growth hormone related. 25% um, of cases are seen in both hips. So typically when people get it, they get it. Well, not typically, I guess. One out of four people get it in both hips. What happens is this thing called the epiphysis slips from the femoral head in a backwards direction due to there not being enough strength in that growth plate. We typically see this in like really tall, skinny kids, um, boys typically, 
um, during when they grow really fast. Um, they get a pain in their groin that comes on over weeks or months, um, and then hip and knee pain during motion. Um, what do you do? If it's just a minor slippage, you can rest and not weight bear. But if it's major displacement, they're going to have to have surgery for this one. So the two injuries um, to youngsters, leg calf perthes disease and slipped capital femoral epiphysis. And here's slipped capital femoral epiphysis. You can see just how the situs isn't quite right. Once again, there it is. You can see that this moved back a little bit. Iliac crest contusion, also known as a hip pointer. Um, I want you to write down an instance where you think someone could get a hip pointer. Um, so take some time, read through this, um, and write down what you think a person could do to get a hip pointer. Um, it's a bruise on their iliac crest, so that part that kind of sticks out. Um, it's a direct blow, so think about some, some sports that could involve that. Uh, pain, spasm, maybe a little bit of paralysis, like you feel like you can't move, now it comes back pretty quickly though. And then decreased rotation of your trunk. Um, you got to rice for at least 48 hours, take some insets, bed rest maybe. Um, this is, hip pointers can be pretty painful. You've probably seen of NFL players that have missed games because of it. So when you come back, you're going to need padding to make sure that you can um, minimize the risk of, of more injury. So these are just some images of hip pointers, um, different ways that it can happen. All right, um, we have this thing called osteitis pubis. Um, this is number 22, and um, we see it in distance runners, and it's because of the repeated stress on the pubic symphysis. Remember, I don't know if I said this in both classes, but the pubic symphysis, this is where, like, during childbirth, this canal widens. And so um, repeated stress on it from just running can lead to this, this issue. Um, it's chronic pain and inflammation. You'll have point tenderness on your pubic tubercle and pain with running, sit-ups, and squats. Management, you just got to rest it in NSAIDs and then slowly work your way back in. Um, a fracture of the pelvis uh, is um, also a medical emergency, a result of a direct blow. We see a lot of these in car accidents. Um, severe pain, loss of function, and shock. You just need to refer these people. Um, this is dangerous um, and they could go into shock and the blood flow and the nerves and all of that. So refer people with an acute fracture of the pelvis on. Um, stress fractures of the pelvis. Um, repeated overuse. Um, a sign might be groin pain with an aching sensation in the thigh that increases when, you act, when you're active and decreases when you stop. Um, and then you got to refer to a physician for this one. They might need to rest for two to five months. But the characteristic here is that when they're resting, they typically feel okay. You can see the different types of stress fractures over here. There's one right there lighting up on a bone scan. Okay, this is an avulsion fracture. Um, and um, avulsions are seen in sports with sudden accelerations and decelerations. And what it does is it actually pulls the tendon away and off of the bone. Um, common sites for this are the ASIS, AIIS, and the ischial tuberosity. Um, it's going to be very painful. You might have some swelling, some point tenderness, and you just need to rest. Limit your activity um, and, and gradually increase um, your exercise. This was number 10 um, on your sheet. So here we circled. You can see lots of different, the abs connect up here, the sartorius, the rectus femoris, your different adductors, your hamstrings. So lots of different muscle attachments that, that could be evolved. Okay, um, got through that quickly. If you need to go back and fill in your chart or answer any unit plan questions, please do. I only had three questions for you today. Uh, make sure you turn those in to the sub, please, uh, before you leave. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I might be back with you on Monday. Um, if I'm not, though, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Um, thank you for being a captive audience, as I am sure that you were.